so, taxes. If, if, if there's a way not to pay, I never pay. My friend Warren Buffett pays a lower tax rate than a secretary. The wealthy are definitely undertaxed relative. Are you paying more in taxes than the world's richest men, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? Surprise, surprise. Have you ever wondered why you dutifully pay your taxes every year, yet massive corporations and billionaires seem to get away with paying little to nothing? Well, folks, the tax system is rigged. And in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how the rich avoid contributing their fair share. Buckle up and get comfortable, because we're going on a wild ride into the shady world of tax loopholes and offshore accounts. And and fair warning, by the end you're going to be pretty pissed off when you realise just how much the deck is stacked in favour of the rich. Let's start with some quick facts. Over the past decade, do you know how much of the new wealth created in America went straight into the pockets of the wealthiest 10%? A whopping 87 cents out of every new dollar. That's right, the top dog scooped up 87% of every bit of newly created wealth, leaving just 13 cents out of every dollar for the remaining 90% of Americans to fight over. And if you think you're still in the middle class, think again. Over the past three decades, the American middle class has been utterly decimated with over two thirds of adults now identifying as working and lower class. But the fun doesn't stop there, guys. It gets even crazier when you zoom in on the really big fish. The top 0.1% wealthiest Americans, the multi-billionaires with more money than they could ever hope to spend in their lifetimes. This tiny sliver of mega-rich elites saw their average household wealth skyrocket to around $1 billion per household. I'll say it again slowly so it sinks in. $1 billion per house on average. Meanwhile, the entire bottom half of Americans actually lost wealth during the same period. They got poorer while the billionaires literally made a killing. To put the gap into perspective, in the decades after World War II, the top 0.1% was about 200 times richer than the average American. Today, they are over a thousand times richer. It's like we're living in the new age of financial lords and serfs. So how precisely did we end up with this kind of extreme inequality that feels like some sort of twisted Charles Dickens novel? Well, a huge piece of the puzzle is how tax policies have shifted over time to favour the wealthy. It began with the idea of the American dream. The dream? A country of the people by the people and for the people. It was to be a society for everyone, where opportunities existed even for the poorest to better their lives and climb the economic ladder through ambition and grit. And in the earlier 20th century, we took steps toward this dream by introducing a progressive tax system, where the rich pay higher rates so lower earners can contribute less. After all, equal opportunity requires equitable contribution, right? Well, don't be fooled, because over time, the wealthy have carved out trick after trick to avoid paying their share of taxes, decimating this dream. Talk about a bait and switch. While the tax system appears progressive on paper, regressive elements enabled by tax avoidance have led the wealth of the top fraction to utterly explode while the working class struggles. See, the rich can divert chunks of income into assets like stocks and bonds. And they lobbied for special treatment where earnings from assets face lower tax rates than salaries, sometimes drastically lower. We're talking about a hedge fund manager earning millions annually but relatively paying less tax than a teacher or or a nurse. It's these unrealized capital gains and stock-based loopholes that allow the ultra-wealthy to skirt tax responsibilities. And it gets even more outrageous. Remember Warren Buffett admitting his effective tax rate is lower than his secretary thanks to his asset-related deductions? Or Mitt Romney shelling out just 14% income tax when he ran for president, again far below his assistant. The fact is, the effective tax rate of a billionaire is often lower than working Americans, thanks to gaping loopholes preserved by relentless lobbying efforts. Beyond taxes on income and investments, inherited wealth similarly goes untouched. Can you believe almost half the world's billionaires got rich in countries without estate taxes on inheritance? And in the US, granted trusts helped the ultra-wealthy transfer assets tax-free for generations. Talk about winning the birth lottery. So while the progressive tax system seems ethical on the surface, the reality is a rigged structure that allows the spectacularly rich to accumulate vast fortunes while bypassing tax obligations the rest of us can't escape. Unlike the spectacularly rich, average Americans primarily pay taxes through good old-fashioned salaries. And we pay our fair share that way. Income tax, payroll tax, state tax, sales tax, property tax, you name it, we pay it. Every year, no matter what. 
you and I have no loopholes or havens to run to. In fact, while personal income tax used to be quite progressive, the system has shifted over time. Payroll taxes funding Social Security and Medicaid have grown to occupy a larger share of working people's tax burden. And that's before sales taxes and VAT hit us on everyday spending. With the poorest segments of society spending larger chunks of their income just to get by, these consumption tax eat up any savings they may scrape together. So, while the wealthy build dynastic fortunes by skipping generations of taxes, the working class, relying on paychecks and punch cards, loses huge chunks off every dollar earned. Tax obligation starts immediately, and never Never stops. Essentially, there are two tax systems, one for income and one for consumption, hitting the poor and working people like us. Another for sheltered assets, raising the fortunes of the ultra-rich. And don't forget, the US corporate tax burden has plunged by over half in the past 60 years despite companies earning record profits. Even the supposed corporate tax cuts often flow to shareholders and executives rather than workers or tax savings. No wonder income and wealth inequality have utterly exploded. We're left funding societal infrastructure like roads and schools while some shareholders reaping billions pay nothing back. Absolutely nothing. As former Labour Secretary Robert Reich notes, the tax code now shapes the economy to benefit the wealthy and powerful at the expense of everyone else. The deck is clearly stacked against us. A case in study is Amazon's multi-year federal tax holiday. The trillion dollar corporate giant built by the world's richest man has mastered tax evasion down to a fine art. To put this into perspective, in 2018, Amazon made over $11 billion in profit. And instead of paying taxes, it bagged a $129 million rebate. The company utilized every trick imaginable, including tax breaks, reinvestment credits, carrying losses, and lots of stock-based executive compensation of course. You see, Amazon benefited significantly from the 2017 tax code changes that slashed the corporate rate, reinvesting heavily to scale growth rather than post profits. It's these cunny tricks that let the company whittle tax obligations down and down. Now, listen, Amazon is not alone. Giants like Netflix, GM and IBM have all earned billions while securing IRS rebates. Over 60 Fortune 500 firms avoided paying a penny in 2018 taxes despite making huge profits. So the big question is, can we call this zero accountability or maybe zero existence of the progressive tax rate? But beyond all of this, we should also ask how they all get away with it while average Americans pay every cent due in tax. Complex strategies, yes, but also deep, deep political influence. With heavy lobbying and campaign donations, big tech and Wall Street have much power and influence over the people who make the rules, the regulators and the lawmakers. The key trick is to move their money to other countries where they don't have to pay taxes. One step forward, two steps back. They have a lot of money hidden there, more than a third of what the whole US economy makes in a whole year. And even when they bring some of their money back to the US, they find ways to reduce their taxes by giving shares to executives as stock-based compensation. This means they pay less taxes on their income. Heads, they win. Tails, we lose. Some want big companies to pay less taxes because they'll use the money to create more jobs and grow the economy. But this does not seem fair to small businesses and ordinary people who have to pay more taxes to make up for the lost money. And when we look to how the big companies spend their money, they mostly give it to their executives and shareholders, not to the workers or the public. So make no mistake, Amazon paying almost no taxes, even though they make billions of dollars yearly, is no accident. In fact, it's a result of their powerful lobbyists who convince the politicians to let them do whatever they want. They care more about making money for themselves than helping people struggling with low incomes and high expenses. But at some point, we must also ask, what attempts have been made to close these darn tax loopholes for the ultra-rich? Well, don't worry, many have tried and failed miserably. You see, every time reform looks close, corporate lobbyists march in to kill the buzz. Politicians hoping to fight for us get intimidated or straight up bought. In the 1960s, for example, a bold government attempted to nip tax tricks by the elite, but within years, outraged billionaire businessmen had funded their opponents. We all know how that went down, unfortunately. Or remember when the Buffett rule was proposed to address billionaires paying low tax rates from capital gains? It aimed to raise rates on the ultra-wealthy to increase fairness, but opposition shelved it swiftly, claiming higher investment taxes slow growth. The core inequality issue remains unsolved. But now, in 2024, the public outcry for tax fairness is swelling, and some common sense reforms have begun gathering steam thanks to politicians still possessing integrity. Still, there are actual meaningful changes within our control. First up, closing what I call the hedge fund loophole could raise billions more yearly. 
This lets billion-making fund managers pay low-income tax, unlike us regular workers. Let's fix that. Next, better funding the IRS to audit questionable billionaires' tax returns could recover trillions over the years. This makes the 1% class nervous about cheating under current rules, but new loopholes keep opening as existing ones close. So, we need grassroots action targeting corporate lobbying influence on policies. Limiting what I call political bribes removes the tax code's tilt towards the rich. For a change we control, altering personal spending and investment habits sends market signals to CEOs and leaders. Being conscientious customers by researching companies' fair wage and tax records and then supporting the good ones makes the big wigs take notice. And ultimately, nothing changes until we vote out politicians catering to wealthy donors rather than everyday people. If we choose leaders who want to pay their fair share of taxes, we can make things fairer for everyone. Well, with that, we have come to the end of this video. Check out more declassified stories if you want realities on issues facing everyday people beyond surface headlines. We uncover inconvenient truths the influential try hiding. So smash that like button if this was an eye-opening breakdown, and don't hesitate to share and ring the notification bell so you'll be among the first to know when we publish next. Until the next video, take care and bye for now.